call this meeting to order the Ellsville Town Council on Monday, February 24, 2020. Pam, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jimmy? Our Heavenly Father, we come before you just one more time, and we thank you so much for the many blessings that you've bestowed on us. We thank you for the many blessings you've in this little town. We thank you for this gathering tonight. We thank you for the fellowship we have with one another. We just thank you that we're all of one mind, that we're trying to improve Ellettsville. We ask you to be with us tonight, have us make the right decisions at the right time for the right reason the right way. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sandy, will you lead roll call, please? Dan Swafford? Here. Scott Oldham? Here. William Ellis? Here. Trevor Sager? Here. Pamela Samples? Here. All right, I'd entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes for the regular meeting February 10th, 2020, and work session February 18th, 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Move on to accounts payable and payroll vouchers, or other way around. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Readings on our resolution 04 2020 fiscal plan for Richland Bean Blossom Community School Corporation. 8118 West Reeves Road. Kevin? Good evening. Um, real simple, state code requires us to do a fiscal plan even though it's for school property which is exempt from taxes so there is no effect. End of story. <clears throat> Any council comments? Just don't you love bureaucracy? <laughs> yeah, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> All right, I entertain a motion. Move we approve resolution 04 2020 fiscal plan for Richland Dean Blossom School Corporation, 8118 West Reeves Road. Second. Okay, uh, is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, Sandy, will you roll call, please? Ann Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Campbell Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Ordinance on first reading. Ordinance 2020-15 to re <coughs> replace in section 150 of the Ellsville Town Code regarding building department, building commissioner, and building codes. Kevin? Oh, yeah. You got a lot of things I'm to do I'm going to be busy on. tonight. Yes, you are. Try to be brief. Um, I wanted to bring this before you now and get the ball rolling. As you know, we're working on reestablishing our building department, and as part of that, we have to basically revise our entire building code. Uh, the state provides a model code that we used. I put that together and inserted the correct language for the town, have sent that up for, to the state for their initial review. It follows their model, so it should be fine, but I'm still waiting to hear back. In the meantime, I want to get this out in front of you so that the council has a chance to look over and see if they have any questions. I'll be honest, I didn't change much in it or at all. I'm simpler that way. It directly references all the applicable building and fire codes. So whenever those are changed elsewhere, it automatically is changed with our code. Um, Big thing, a lot of the text amendments later on are tied to the building department, specifically the fee schedule that I've had to update, and I'll explain that going forward. <clears throat> uh, otherwise, I can answer any questions you have right now in the building code. Um, I'm hoping to have it back for second reading at the next council meeting, provided I get my comments back from the state. If not, I'm, it'll, I want to wait until we get that before we I ask for approval. Okay. Any council comments or questions? Yes, I do have one. Um, with establishing this, are we establishing a building department department supervisor, or will that?
be still under your purview? Uh, technically, I will be the, it's in there, I think, building commissioner, since the inspector will just, we'll, we'll hire the, hopefully, if you approve later on, we'll hire our inspector, who, but since it'll only be part-time, I felt it'd be better to have a full-time person in charge of the department. And um, real quick, too, uh, what initiated this is, <clears throat> What is the reasoning that we're going through changing all this? And um, I've had a number of comments from different people wanting the building department back here. Um, Which it, is currently where? Uh, currently, our building permits are processed through Monroe County. If we bring it back here, it gives us an opportunity to lower rates a little bit, take care of everything our own, probably expedite processes. I think overall it'd be a win-win. It's not gonna be a money generator for the town, but it, at the very least should break even, maybe a little bit in a positive. And would it save uh, people looking to build uh, time? Because currently they have to go to both places now to Cur file stuff? Cur well, right now they submit things to Monroe County, and then eventually they let us know that they have permits ready, and that ranges between a couple of days and a week, 10 days. And then we get the permits and then we have to process them, take them back over to Monroe County. And it, it can get a little lengthy at times. This will just keep everything right here in our department. So we'll know right away, we'll be able to review things much quicker. I think it'll be a much quicker process overall. Do you have room in your department? It's little. Yeah. We are commandeering the former town manager's office for our building inspector. <laughs> so, yeah, that, otherwise, no, we wouldn't have. <laughs> okay, any other uh, council comments, questions? Well, the one I know the cost, is this, what is this going to, the cost for having a building department, are we? I mean, the main, really, the only cost associated with it is the inspector. Other than that, I mean, there's a few little odds and ends, gas and supplies and different, but I think overall, and I apologize because I think I'd gone over this before you'd come on to council last year. I want to say the total cost was probably around 20-ish thousand. And um, is that appropriated in, last, in the budget we passed, or would we need a... It, yeah, okay. it, was, it, it is right. in the budget. So we my only concern with that was just a mid-budget appropriation no. for salary, so... Okay. No, we're set. We're actually going to end up ahead because I had it budgeted for the entire year and we're going to be a couple months behind. That's always a good thing. So, yeah, it'll be a little leftover. All right. Any further questions? Okay. I think we got one out there, maybe. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. Ordinance 2020 16 to add roundabouts and traffic section of Ellisville Town Code. And this is tabled, I guess? I would ask that the town council table it when Sandy asked me to do this. I thought it would be an easy fix, and then after I looked at it, I decided maybe not. And I did not have the chance to get with um, Kip or Danny to talk about uh, what they think we need. So I would ask the council to table this until the next meeting. Okay, I'll move we table Ordinance 2020-16 on its first reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Jumping down to ordinances on second reading, and there's a bunch of them. So uh, we'll start with ordinance 2020-02 to amend section 152-067 regarding accessory structures. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So you got me all flustered with all those. <laughs> Okay, so we'll go back up to Ordinance 202001 to annex four, four parcels belonging to the Richland Bean Blossom Community School Corporation, 8118 West Reeves Road. All right. Uh, this is just the second reading for the annexation of the remainder of the school parcels. Um, I can answer any questions on that. There's not really much else to say. <coughs> Um, any questions to this? Any comments? Is there any public comment on Ornitz 2020-01? 
Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. I'll, I'll move to uh, approve ordinance 2020-01 to annex four par parcels belonging to the Richland Bean Blossom Community School Corporation at 8118 West we Reeves Road. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Sandy, roll call, please. Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, I was asked to um, jump new business up before we get into all these ordinance, because we have quite a few people in the audience that are here for um, a, a new business. So, um, Jimmy, is this okay with you? That's fine, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we need to make a motion to move this up, Darla, or is it all right? I think you're fine. Okay. All right, appointment, police sergeant position. Jimmy? Mr. President, Council, I present to you tonight uh, Zachary Michael for promotion to police sergeant. Uh, sergeant Russell Harris, I told you a couple weeks ago, uh, had decided to leave the department. He took a, a job with Indiana Gaming Commission, and uh, Zach uh, uh, interviewed for the for the job and uh, came out on top, basically. But you know, Zach uh, uh, is a very active officer. He's one of our uh, uh, intel. He uh, takes care of our communications, our, our uh, te information technology. Uh, he made 18 OWI arrests last year, worked 19 crashes, but took 837 calls for service. This is working 11 at night till 7 in the morning, which gets pretty dead after a couple, three hours. So he's a very active officer. But I present to you tonight, Zach Michael. Zach, if you come forward, if you would, to, for approval uh, to move to the sergeant's position. All right. I'd entertain a motion for this. So moved. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And I thank you. Katie, would you come up, please? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. Okay, Zach's family stand. Mom and Dad are here. <coughs> brother's here. Who else is here? The two brothers. Two brothers here. <laughs> thank you for coming. If you want to take the badge off, please. Do we have somebody taking pictures? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to do this. I'm going to allow you to hand this off. <laughs> 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 I hope she was <laughs> Thank you. Sheriff's Department, uh, Lieutenant uh, Lucas Tate, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Uh, did I say the name wrong? You realize you're laughing? Huh? Okay. Uh, my Chief Deputy, uh, Jay Humphreys, here, and we really appreciate uh, all the guys coming. So thank you very much, Council. Thank, thank you. you. I'll take one more picture, Chief. Oh, okay. Sorry. Good. Thank you. Zach, I'd like to say Ellettsville is truly blessed to have you with us. Amen. You're, you're an awesome. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. All right, let's move back up to ordinances. Not as fun, but we got to get through them. Okay, now we'll do ordinance 2020-02. Actually, we'll give it a few minutes to clear out here. Hmm? Must be boring. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try to make it more exciting next time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> nice showing. Mm -hmm. Very nice. All right, let's move to ordinance 2020 02. I've been trying to get this on forever here. To amend section 152. 
2.067 regarding accessory structures. All right. Kevin. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. Um, sorry. Uh, real quick, of all the ordinances, there are the text amendments coming up. Most of them are very simple and very straightforward, so hopefully this will go quick. Um, the first one for 152.067, all that is being changed in this is ex changing the minimum square footage of an accessory structure that requires a building permit. Currently our code was a little conflicting whether it was 120 feet or over 120 feet. We actually backed it down to anything over 99 feet, so 100 feet or more requires a permit. That partially is to give us a little more uh, oversight to kind of keep people from putting sheds and easements and other things that eventually cause other problems. This does include decks and things like that, just enclosed structures. Now this will just be detached accessory structures. Why do they call them accessory structures? Just they curious. They are <laughs> supposed to be accessories to the primary by a house, generally. Okay. That, that actually creates a lot of planning discussion for some reason. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's I can imagine it's a thing. One thing I remember one of the reasons that it was always explained to me is that if they didn't call it that, people could say they could live in it. But an accessory structure has to be uh, attached to a property with a living or men, uh, or commercial something. Sure, it's it's to help them. You can't just say, "Well, I have a mother-in-law's room out in a mm -hmm. garage." And we had to that specifically nice. put that in our code. You cannot live in an accessory structure. Yep. That's already in there, though, so we're going to have to. What about a she shed? <laughs> <laughs> have you solved that yet, Mike? Who burnt down Sheila's she shed? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, that makes a lot of sense. I'm glad I asked the question. See? So, because. Mm -hmm. um... All right. Um, is there a motion on this ordinance? I'll make a motion to. Approve ordinance 2020-2 to amend section 152.067 regarding accessory structures. Is there a second? Okay, any public comment on this ordinance? See none, any council comment? Sandy, roll call? Do we have to roll call the ordinance? Okay, yes. okay, roll call please. Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Jumping down to ordinance 2020-03 to amend section 152.073 regarding appeal procedures to followed by property owners, to be followed by property owners. Um, real simple, the only thing being changed in this section, and this is gonna be the same for most of these, it, and actually I probably should explain this to begin with. What, what I've done is moved all the planning fees into one section instead of being in every individual section. That's why there's all these individual ordinances on here so it takes the fee out of each individual section and everything will be in one from now on as long as you approve it later when we get to that but so all this would do is change the reference to the new section for the fee okay can we amend all those at once so that's it for the rest of the list uh there's two that are different but yeah 11 of them are like that I like Williams, but I don't yeah, I think we have to go single, though. Do we, Darla? I would prefer that you do. Okay. okay. That's all right. That's fine. Um, is there a motion for ordinance 2020-03? So moved. Second. Any public comment? Any council comment? Sandy Rocco? Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, ordinance 2020-04 to amend section 152.013 or 103 regarding administration. Same as, the other, same as the last one, just changing the reference for the fee. Okay, is there a motion? Second. Any council comment? Any public comment? Sandy Rocco? Walker, yes. Scott Oldham, yes. William Ellis, yes. Trevor Sager, yes. Pamela Samples, yes. Motion carries. Ordinance 2020 05 to amend section 152.149 regarding the insurance of permits. Again, this one is just fixing the reference to the fee schedule. 
Okay. Is there a motion? Move. Second. Second. Okay. Any council comment? <coughs> any public comment? Sandy roll call? Yes, Walker? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Jeremy Sager? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carried. Ordinance 2020-06 to amend section 152.183 regarding site improvement permits. Uh, this one's actually different. This is, the site improvement permits are issued in conjunction with building permits and they apply to anything that involves the actual alteration of a building footprint, either construction, demolition, or if you're going up, which I guess isn't technically changing the footprint, but things of those lines um, what this section we had that we had this section already but it wasn't very detailed this goes into more of what we're, we require when building permits come in um, what activities are exempt from permits uh, what's required in the application and we added a section on review for review period. So if anyone does apply or wh whenever someone does apply, they know when to expect it back and put an expiration on permits. Nothing in here really changes anything we do already. It's just putting it in writing. And the, ex uh, the expectation time was 15 days. I'm That's the maximum. I mean, and expectation is right. Obviously, a, and then a year. That, Permits to be good for the first uh, for a year from issuance. Was that it? Yeah, they'll be good and for a year, and they can be renewed for cause for another year. We have an issue now where some permits don't expire ever, and it's causing a few little problems. But okay, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Any public comment? Any council comment? Sandy Rocco. Dan Swalker. Yes. Scott Oldham, yes. William Ellis, yes. Trevor Sager, yes. Pamela Samples, yes. motion carries. Ordinance 2020-07 to amend section 152.228 regarding fees, fines, and enforcement. Back to the exciting part again. This is just changing the reference for the fee schedule. Okay. Did you entertain a motion? So moved. Second. Any public comment? Any council comment? Sandy Rocco? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Ordinance 2020 08 to amend section 152.244 regarding application fees for wireless communication facility. Uh, this one's a little more interesting, not much. Uh, changing the fee, uh, fee schedule reference, uh, I did want to note on this one the current fee is 150 plus the cost of mailings which is variable in the fee schedule. This has been changed to a $200 flat fee. So that way you don't have to worry about what the mailing costs are gonna be, we can just set it out. I don't know how much mailings are involved. We haven't even done one of these permits since I've been here, so. I'd entertain a motion. So Second. Any council comment? Just, uh, is this like for cell phone towers? Yeah, okay. Brand new towers. It wouldn't even be modifying. So if they system. put a cell phone uh, repeater on an existing building, this would not apply? Nope. Any public comment? Sandy Rocco? Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Ordinance 2020-09 to amend section 152.264 regarding signed permit fees. Uh, this one just changes the fee schedule reference. Did you entertain a motion? Second. Any public comment? Any council comment? Sandy Rocco? Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Ordinance 2020 10 to amend section 152.295 regarding variance from development standards. Again, this one just takes the fee out of this and moves it to the fee schedule. That was, this one actually was repetitive, so it just took, I just took it out. It's covered elsewhere. It was four variances. We have a 
section on variances, and for some reason we had it in another section. I have no idea why. It just needs, well, the rest of the, the rest of this section has relevant information. I just crossed the fee part out of it. <clears throat> Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Any public comment? Any council comment? Any roll call? Dan Swafford? Yes. Uh, Odom, yes. William Mallow, yes. Trevor Sager, yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. All right, we're almost halfway through here. Oh, we're over halfway. <laughs> Ordinance 2020-11 to amend section 152.296 regarding special exceptions. All right, again, this is the same as the last one. Well, not exactly, this same concept. The fee is listed in here and also in our Board of Zoning Appeals section, so it's just crossed out of the section altogether. Okay, I'd entertain a motion. Any public comment? Council comment? Sandy? Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. General Samples? Yes. Motion carried. Ordinance 2020 12 to amend section 152.317 regarding filing fees for applications to the Planning Commission. This is another one, just moves the fees to the new section and sets a reference in there. The fees don't change. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Any public comment? Any council comment? Sandy? Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Family samples? Uh, <laughs> Ordinance 2020 13 to amend section 152.173 regarding the submittal review and approval of applications for land. Dis Distribution activities. Hey. Disturbing activities. <laughs> I'm getting a little disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> this one just changes the reference for the fee schedule. Okay. Entertain a motion. So moved. Any public comment? Council comment. Sandy Roll Call? Dan Swafford. Yes. Scott Olin, yes. William Ellis. Yes. Trevor Sager. Yes. Panel of samples. Yes. Motion carries. Ordinance 2020-14 to add new section 152.363 regarding fees to be charged for building permits, site permits, and applications to the Planning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeals. This is the new section with all the fees in it where everything is now located. Um, Planning Commission, Board of Zoning Appeals, and our driveway grading sign permits did not change. The only one of those that did change was the wireless communication facility towers. Uh, the big piece of this is the build, the site location and building permits. This is new. I put a comparison sheet that I sent out to everyone. I think it was in the packet. I don't, honestly don't packet. remember. It's at the end of the packet. Okay. Basically, it's set up in a way that the fees will be cheaper than what the county charges now for building permits. Some are a lot cheaper, some are just a little cheaper, but all in all, they're all cheaper. And more importantly, none are more expensive. Correct. So good I did, job on that. I did find there's one that could, in a very extreme circumstance, if there's a very, very small commercial building, but we'll worry about that if that ever happens. Okay, entertain a motion. <coughs> so moved. Any public comment? Any council comment? Council question. Sure. Yeah. Micro repeaters for cell phone, is that considered under this ordinance or is that? Uh, I think, I'm trying to think now, if anything, it might just be an electrical permit. Okay. That's all I've got. Okay, Sandy, roll call. Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carried. Ordinance 2020-17 to amend section 153.013 regarding filing fees to be charged for applications for subdivision approval. Another one fixes the reference. Okay. Entertain a motion? So moved. I'll second it. Any public comment? Any council comment? Sandy? Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Olin? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Samples? Yes. Motion And finally, Ordinance 2020-18 to amend section 
2020-2.335 regarding filing fees for applications to the Board of Zoning Appeals. And just fixing the fee schedule reference on that as well. Any public comment? Any council comment? Sandy. Nance Walker. Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got your uh, air time for the night. Okay? I'm not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nothing under old business, flood report. Um, we'll pass our, we'll just table flood report. Is there a motion to table? Okay, new business, uh, request to hire a building stormwater inspector. Hey, me again. Uh, um, I would like to request permission to hire Dan Durheimer as our building and stormwater inspector. Uh, conducted interviews several weeks ago. He's very qualified, comes highly recommended. I think he'd be a great job. He'll fit in well with our department. And just for clarification, this is a budgeted position. It is budgeted, 20-ish uh, hours a week. Okay. 20-ish. Yeah, it's variable. <laughs> if we need him more, he can work up to 30, if not 20. Okay, um, entertain a motion. I move with that we approve the request to hire Dan Durham yep. as the building stormwater inspector. Second. Sandy Rocco? Dan Swafford? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Pamela Santos? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. President? Yes. I've added to the agenda under new business the uh, hiring of a part-time firefighter. Okay, Michael, go ahead. Hi, uh, we have a volunteer firefighter who has applied to uh, transfer to part-time. Uh, he is, was not an EMT, that's why he was not eligible to become part-time. He is a very active volunteer firefighter. One, well, in fact, he was the most active one we had uh, over the last couple year, year and a half, and uh, very energetic. So uh, he's a full-time plumber by trade, uh, apprentice plumber and uh, we'd like to bring him on as a part-time firefighter. The reason, do, doing this kind of a hurriedly, we are gonna be hiring two full-time firefighters. I hope to bring the names to the U next uh, meeting. And the three candidates that we have in the interviews are all very active part-time firefighters. They do a lot of hours. So it's gonna create a hole, you know, quite a bit. So we're trying to, uh, we are recruiting some people to work and we'll have, probably have some more part-timers down the road. But um, uh, the person I want to hire, his name is Skyler Memering, and um, he can help us out a lot with those hours. So I'm asking uh, transfer from volunteer to part-time, Skyler Memering. Okay. How many um, part-time firemen do you have now? 22. 22. And what, what's the standard that you keep on? Well, I mean, what we have to fill, um, uh, starting in, in, in mar middle of March, six equivalent of full-time employees. And we use those uh, part-time people to do that with. Okay. Some do it on a regular basis, not very many. It's, you know, it takes that many to fill up the, the hours. Some can fill in, you know, 12 or 24 hours a month, and some do as much as uh, 120. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's quite a bit. So, so at part-time, <clears throat> part they can only work how many hours? 49 hours a week. 49 hours a week. Scheduled 49 hours a week, that's correct. And that's part time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's the rate of pay for uh, part time? Twelve fifty. What is the average, or if you know, rate of pay within the county for part time? Well, I just learned yesterday is just a little bit higher than that now. They've uh, in twenty twenty the other departments that we you know have to compete with uh, raised theirs as so one department as much as fifteen fifty an hour. So how much would that impact us to match that? Do you have the numbers off top? No, of I do not have those numbers offhand. So can you bring that to us? Yes, I can. Thank you to match or exceed that, so sure. we have a draw for part time. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Good Actually, to exceed that, so yes. we have a draw. Okay. Um, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any council comments, questions? Sandy Rocco. 
Dan Swapper? Yes. Pat Oldham? Yes. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, privilege of the floor. Anyone in the audience have anything, non-agenda items to bring forth? Seeing none, we'll jump to supervisor's comments. Kevin, you don't get this spot this time. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy? Uh, working right now on a fill-in, or not a fill-in, but a replacement for the ninth officer, street officer. Uh, I've got a unit that uh, is trying to get into the academy right now. If he does, he'll, I'll be bringing him to you sometime in May as the appointment for a full-time officer. So uh, we've, got, we've got another backup, possibly if, if that doesn't happen. But uh, I'm looking to get him into the academy in May. But he is filling in part-time for us now. Thank you. Okay. Jeff? Uh, I gave you a packet that has three different th items on it. The first one, the top page, is... Uh, I'd like to put uh, alarm systems they are called Omni units that we have one on the Smithfield telephone lift station, which is our biggest lift station. Uh, we now have two other lift stations that we use quite a bit, but I'd like to put these on. Um, they not only alarm us when there's a pump failure or a high level alarm, uh, they track the hours, the flows that come out of there. They do all the things. Uh, we can look at the pump station in the palm of our hand. Um, it'd be good for our, uh, our collection system. IDAM's kind of pushing everybody to go to these uh, to stop any type of SSOs, which are sanitary sewer overflows. Uh, the other two things are Omni Beacons. They're just a smaller unit. You don't get as much with those. They'll go on two smaller lift stations that we have, and they just give us an alarm if something goes on in the middle of the night so we can uh, make sure we get there. That cost is for the equipment and installation. There is a uh, monthly fee for the cell signal, or the cell service. So uh, just looking for your approval to move forward with this. Um, how many lift stations do we currently have? Five. Five lift stations? Yeah. And how, what's the age on those lift stations? Uh, Cooper Core lift station uh, is probably the oldest lift station we have. It's in Kelly Heights, uh, which we're gonna talk about it in here in a minute. Um, it was here when I got here, and I'd say as old as how old Kelly Heights? Well, that part there was 1980. So, we've got 40 years there. Smithville Telephone's probably uh, 20 years old. We replaced it. One of the early things we did between 18 and 20 years. Ratliff Road's a newer lift station. We have one in, uh, what is the name by the water tower, the apartment complex? It's, there's an apartment complex where our, our water tower is off McNeely. There's oh, one in there. Crest? Excuse me? Is it Stonecrest? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. There's one in the back of it, and it's going to get one of the Omni Beacons, and then we have one at uh, Early Childhood Center that serves all that area, which will also be taken on the flow from uh, Kihi. Okay. And what was the price of all those? $7,351 Okay. for all that equipment and installation. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I'll second. These will all be paid out of the uh, capital um, capital improvement uh, monies that we have. It's adequately adequately funded. Is that the right way? <laughs> Mike always gives me a hard time about how I say that. Say what? <laughs> I, mean, I can't say it. <laughs> All right, um, any further council comments on that? Any public comment? See none, Sandy Rocco? Dan Swafford? Yes. Yes. The second one is the Smithfield Telephone has a uh, two pumps in it. Uh, one is that we bought it, this top one, which is a what they call a chopper pump. It, basically has a blade and it chops up the uh, debris that comes through the pump. We bought one a year ago. It's working very efficiently. Uh, we like what it's doing. We haven't had any uh, stoppages in that pump. Uh, the other pump in there is very antiquated. It's over 10 plus years old. Uh, it has a seal fell on it now. Uh, we'd, I'd like to purchase an identical chopper pump. The second page is a not really a comparable pump, but I did get another price for a, a 10 horsepower pump but this is a non-clogged pump. Uh, that's what the difference in price is. One's a chopper, 
I'll have two of the same pumps, and I can take the old pump and you put it at the wastewater plant for a backup in case we do have a pump failure there. That lift station has taken on a lot more flow since all the expansion in that area. So um, I, I like having a backup pump there because when it rains, it gets quite a bit of I and I there that we're trying to fix. So did, did you reason, say, go ahead. go ahead, I'm sorry. No, what's the life expectancy of these? Uh, anyway, it depends on the duty on them, but I mean, you know, you should get seven to 10 years out of them. Well, wow. sometimes you get longer than that. Just depends. There's not much maintenance to them. There's submersible pumps. Just depends on, you know, anything can happen to them. What's the price on that one? $10,535. <clears throat> Did you have anything else to add to that? I cut you off. No, not really. Okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Any council comment? Any public comment? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The last one is Cooper Court Lift Station. Uh, the reason there's two pages. Uh, the pumps that we currently have there, uh, we've had trouble with one of them. It's, we, it still will come on, but it just keeps tripping out. So we looked into replacing the lift station. Uh, if you look at the second page, to replace the entire lift station was fifty-one thousand four hundred seventy dollars. Uh, so they found me two um, self-driving five-horsepower pumps that will work. Uh, they no longer make the pumps we had because it's forty-year-old station, and that cost is twelve thousand nine hundred thirty-four dollars. Uh, under the circumstances, I'd just soon replace the pumps as replace the lift station at this time. It will be one of the ones that also gets an Omni. It's in a residential area. Did you say Cooper Court on that one? Cooper Court lift station. That is for two pumps at $12,934. And again, that will leave me one of the old pumps as a spare in case we have problems. All right. Entertain a motion. So moved. Any council comment? Any public comment? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank that you. Mm -hmm. Mike, any further? Danny? No. Kevin? I'll let you talk five minutes. That's it. Uh, I'm good. No, I just want to say thank you for listening to all that. I know that was a lot to take in, but needed done. <laughs> yeah. I was kidding you, too, by the way. We, we, we do need to go over this. And, you know, it may have sound like we were just rubber stamping them, but I know personally i read through a lot of that stuff and it does get rather ominous to sit there and read those codes and ordinances so it's tedious very plus very. you've already heard it at plan commission exactly so. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh any further council comments see none i'd entertain a motion to adjourn so moved second, second. all those in favor say aye aye, aye. meeting adjourned